Hi Bot Builders! This is Andrea Galately from Team Witch Doctor on the TV show BattleBots. And this is episode 7 of Witch Doctor Jr. Made possible by Send Cut Send. Today, we're going to learn how to get ready for your very first tournament. In episode 6, we learn how to test your robot safely and the importance of drive practice before your first competition. If you missed it, make sure to go back and watch it before your first event to make sure everything is working correctly. Before we talk about winning or losing, I want to take some time to talk about the community that you're about to join. Whenever people ask me why I build robots, the answer may be a little surprising. While I do love building and battling robots, my favorite part of this sport is that this community is the most incredible group of people I've ever met. They never cease to amaze me. I've met people from all walks of life that have made me a better robot builder and a better human being. And not just that, they're always incredibly welcoming. As you step into this community, keep this in mind. Take advantage of opportunities that you'll get through this sport. Enjoy the unparalleled company and become a part of the reason why this sport is so great. Most events are 100% run by volunteers, ours included. You might be surprised to learn that the person doing your safety inspection is actually an accomplished rocket scientist or even a well-known BattleBots competitor. My advice for any builder that wants to jump into this community is to show up early and stay late and ask around to see if any of the staff or any of your fellow competitors need help. I can tell you from experience that there is a ton of work that goes into putting on each one of these events. The volunteers can use your help building the arena or setting up the pit tables, for example. We like to include competitors in all aspects of running the event, not just competing, such as judging for other weight classes and even announcing matches. Volunteering your time will help you get an understanding of all aspects of combat robotics. And most importantly, it's an excellent chance to meet people who love building robots as much as you do. Robot builders are some of the most incredible people I know, and I'll take any chance to spend some extra time with them. Now, let's talk about winning. I know, you're in it to win it, and being successful at your first competition means a lot to you. You should absolutely do your best to be competitive. But just winning matches will not determine how successful you are at your first event. There is so much more to each one of these competitions than winning in the arena. Take the time to walk around the pits and introduce yourself, and ask questions about other robots that interest you. At least to me, being successful at your first event doesn't just mean winning matches. It means becoming part of the awesome combat robotics community. Okay, now let's talk about losing. It's gonna happen. It happens to all of us, and it's an inevitable part of the sport. You lose, you shake hands with your opponent, you check out the battle damage, then you go back, you fix your robot, and you get back in that arena. Sometimes, your opponent will even give you a signed piece of the robot as a thank you for a great fight. Some losses will be by judge's decision, and you may disagree with that decision. Keep in mind that your view of the match is very biased, and you may think you won just because that's what you wanted to see. Also, keep in mind that judges are almost always volunteers, and they're making the best decision that they can. Judges' decisions are always final, so arguing will get you nowhere. If you don't like their decisions, just don't let your match go to the judges. Most local tournaments are double elimination, unlike the TV show, which means you have to lose twice to be eliminated. This means that you'll always have at least two matches, even if you lose them both. Let me pause here to tell you a story. At a recent event, I noticed a young boy, maybe eight or nine years old, that had traveled with his family over four hours to come to his first competition. He was so excited, but also very, very focused. He drove well, and his robot worked well, but he still lost his very first match, and then he lost his second match. He was heartbroken. He just wanted to go home. As he was packing up, a young competitor from another team came up to him and asked him if he wanted to join him for a grudge match. If you haven't heard of grudge matches, it's a battle that's just for fun. It doesn't count towards the tournament. That little boy lit up, spent some time fixing his robot, and then joined this new friend in the arena for another battle. That extra grudge match completely changed this little boy's experience, and he left the tournament with a smile on his face, not because he had won battles, but because he finally felt part of such a special community, and he was having fun battling his robot without the pressure of winning. If you're watching this video, you're going to end up on both sides of this story at some point. So I challenge you to remember what makes our community so special and choose to be part of making our sport even greater. Okay, that's enough about winning and losing. Let's talk about getting ready for your first event. 
The first thing you'll have to do is find which event you want to attend. RobotCombatEvents.com does a great job of listing worldwide events. BuildersDB.com is also a very popular site here in the United States. You usually need to register for your event ahead of time, and you should check if you need to fill out any paperwork or pay registration before you arrive. Most events handle paperwork and payments in person at the event, but some events do require it in advance, so make sure you know the details for your event. To register for the event, you'll need a robot name, a team name, and a picture of your robot. Some sites may also ask you to add some additional information about your robot, like weapon type and even strategy notes that you may want to share. As the event gets closer, you can usually check back on the registration site and take a look at your competitors before the event. Now that you're registered for your event, finish your robot if you haven't already. Showing up to an event with a robot that's not done, even if you just have to do one little thing, is a bad idea. You'll be rushing to get it done instead of enjoying the event. And if anything goes wrong that you didn't expect, it will be an even bigger problem. Just show up ready to compete and you'll have a much, much better time. Read the event rules ahead of time and make sure that your robot complies with them. Some rules to look out for are whether they require an on-off light, a specific type of switch, or if they have any specific rules for spinners. If you happen to be competing with a spinner weapon already, make sure that you have an appropriate weapon lock for it, since it will be required in every event. I don't recommend using a spinning weapon at your first event, but if you do decide to use a spinning weapon, please make sure you do it safely. I'll go over the special safety precautions for spinning weapons in a later episode, since we have quite a bit to learn before we get there. I know I've mentioned this in past episodes, but it's important enough to repeat it here. Before your first event, make sure to practice driving. Other than finishing your robot, it's the most important thing you can do to get ready. I know this sounds obvious, but so many first-time builders skip this step. Driving skill is often the deciding factor in a match, so make sure you feel comfortable driving your robot right side up and upside down. Can your robot get stuck on its side or its back? Try it at home before your first match. You'll want to pack a toolbox with some basic things to be able to repair the robot during the event. Bring any tools that you use to build your robot. This includes things like hex keys, screwdrivers, and electrical tape. You'll also want to make sure that you bring anything you need to repair your robot in between matches. This includes bringing some spare parts of the components that are more likely to break. I'd say that a couple of extra drive motors are among the most useful spare parts to pack. An extra drive speed controller can also be useful if you take a big hit that affects your electronics. Tires can usually take a lot of damage before they need to be replaced, but you can break some extras if you like to keep them looking nice and new. You can also lose a few screws during battles or even repairs, so some extra hard work can save you a lot of time looking for that one screw that rolled off the table or fell out in the arena. You'll also take some damage that you can fix without having to swap out an entire part. Your armor, for example, is going to take a beating. A pair of pliers is really useful to fix any bent parts. A file will help you smooth out any sharp edges from battle damage. Other common tools like wire cutter, scissors, duct tape, and zip ties will also prove super useful. You may even want to pack a Dremel to fix more aggressive damage, like a part that needs to be ground down, drilled, or even cut off. A Dremel is always a super handy tool to have, and we use them even in the heavyweight classes. Of course, you don't want to forget to pack your robot. Also remember to pack your battery, battery charger, and transmitter. Double check to make sure that your transmitter's batteries are charged as well. If you realize that you forgot to pack something once you get to the event, don't be afraid to ask other competitors for help. Builders borrow tools and parts from each other all the time, even if you're about to face them in the arena. We all want to have a good battle, and we want all the robots to be working at their very best. Before our finals fight in Season 4 of BattleBots, we were running out of parts and spare tools in order to be able to get ready. We got help from six different teams that lent a hand, including ByteForce, who we were about to battle for the championship. Other than robots and tools, you also want to pack some basic things to keep comfortable during the event. It can be hard to find time to leave the event to go get food for lunch or dinner, so it's a great idea to bring a small cooler with at least some snacks and drinks. Just make sure that your event allows it. Make sure to bring some extra chairs, especially if you have a few people on your team. You may also want to bring a sweater if you tend to get cold. I always make sure to pack a camera so I can take photos of cool robots and document the event. It's also super helpful to have someone record video of your matches so that you can review it later. 
Congratulations! Now you're ready to compete in your first combat robotics event. Good luck out there, and please remember to enjoy the entire experience. I would like to thank Senkut Sen for making this video possible. In the last episode, we learned how to track the order from Senkut Sen until it shows up at your door. Now, let's take a look at how Senkut Sen actually cuts those parts. Senkut Sen uses a high-powered laser to cut metal parts in a process called laser cutting. The laser is computer controlled, so it can quickly make extremely accurate lines through the material being cut. After you submit your order, Send Cut Send gets to work cutting your parts, finishing them, and packing them up in just three days or less, all right here in the United States. I ordered these parts on a Monday and received them that Friday. Thank you, Send Cut Send, for supporting this video. Now that you're ready for your first event, I'll walk you through the check-in procedure and the safety checks in the next episode. I know it may sound a little intimidating, but we'll go through each step together in the next episode to make sure that you're ready and you know what to expect. It's an easy process that will be similar at any event that you go to. If you have any questions so far, please feel free to drop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. I'll see you at episode 8, where we'll learn about check-in procedures and safety inspections. Until then, happy building!